Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to prove the formula for finding the area of a circle. And that formula is, it is very famous, pi r squared. So by the end of this video, I want to give you a proof that this is indeed correct. We learned this even in elementary school, but the way that we're going to prove it is going to be much advanced than elementary school. We will use calculus. And let me draw the picture and then explain how we will approach this proof. We will have a coordinate system like this. This will be the x-axis and this will be the y-axis, pretty standard. We will have a circle centered at the origin. Now, you don't need to, and this doesn't look good, let me draw it again. You don't need to center the circle at the origin because even if you shift it up or right, up or anyway, the area will of course not change. So in fact, the formula that we're about to prove will be correct for any circle in area or orientation. And the circle will, will have a radius of r. So this point will be r and this will be negative r. Okay, of course it is r comma zero, but let's not confuse the picture. We have this. Now, I want you to understand that this is a very symmetrical picture. So why, why, what do I mean by that? I mean that, for example, these four pieces, they have equal areas. And also the upper and lower halves have the same area. This is very important because the way we will approach this question is by calculating the area of the uh, upper half and then multiplying that area by 2 to get the complete uh, area of a circle. So how can we calculate the blue area? Well, to start off, we need to find, we need to write the equation uh, for a circle. And that equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. This, def this definition directly comes from the definition of a circle. Because circle is defined as the set of all points that are equidistant to a center point. And that is exactly what this formula is telling us. So this is the formula for a circle. And if we solve this for y, what do we get? Well, we will subtract x squared from both sides so that we have y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we will get that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now we will be using the plus because, as I said, we will use the upper, ha uh, upper half of the circle, find its area, then double it to find the whole area. So here we go. We have the area of the whole circle is equal to 2 times the blue area. Well, what is the blue area? This is where we use calculus. We will now write an integral. And as you might know, integrals are used to calculate areas. We will have the integral sign. Oops, let me write it again. We have the integral sign. And we want the integral from negative r starting from this and arriving at r. So we have our boundaries as negative r to r. And what is the function that we are uh, taking the integral of? Well, it is going to be the function that gives the upper half of our circle. So it is going to be r squared minus x squared under the square root. Then we have a dx. All right. Here, you could approach this integral in lots of different ways, but the way I'm going to do it is by defining an angle. I will define an angle theta. And let me do it with orange, maybe. If I, uh, if I define an angle theta like this, and since this length is r, I can see from the picture that x is equal, to, let me write it here, x is equal to r times cosine of theta. Okay, that comes from uh, right, uh, that comes from right angle trigonometry. Uh, dx, uh, if the, we take the differential of x, we will get 1 dx is equal to 
R, well, what is the derivative of cosine with respect to the angle inside of it? It is going to be negative sine of theta, and then we're going to have d theta, okay? So we basically showed that dx is equal to negative r sine of theta d theta. So far, so good. Now we are ready to make our substitution. We will have two times uh, two times the integral so negative r to r and we have r squared minus instead of x i am going to substitute what we just found so we have r squared cosine squared of theta this is under the square root then we have dx for dx i am just going to write uh, this guy so we have negative r sine of theta d theta okay and here I don't want r and negative r as my boundaries anymore because inside of this um, I don't have I don't have, have x anymore. I have theta, so I need to make these angles. Let me erase them then. And what shall I write? Well, if I have negative r and if I substitute that, if I picture that in my head, I am going to say. Hey, look, negative r, it happens here. And when that happens, my angle theta is going to be 180 degrees. However, we don't write our angles in degrees. We write, it, write them in radians. So instead of 180 degrees, I will write pi, radians. And when uh, my x value is r, I know that my angle will be, my line will be like this. So my angle theta will be zero, okay? Here we continue, so we have 2 pi 0, and now I want to factor what is under the, actually let me do it here, so this thing, it will be, if I factor the inside, I will have r squared minus r squared, and inside the parentheses, 1 minus cosine squared of theta, this is under the square root, here I can take the r squared out of the, out of the, square root as r i don't need a plus or minus because r is the radius it is a positive value we have r then then we will have the square root of what is uh, what is under this so we will have the square root of one minus cosine square of theta and what is that going to be well we know sine squared plus cosine squared gives you one so one minus cosine squared is going to give you sine squared this means we have the square root of sine squared of theta however we can even simplify this further because for our for our uh, uh, interval of interest the sine values are always positive okay notice that we are always above the x-axis so the sine values are always positive from pi to zero or from zero to pi which means which means we can just write sine of theta okay we don't need a plus or minus because as i said sine values are always positive for our interval then we have negative r sine of theta d theta so we can even simplify this and write r squared sine squared put the negative in front and write the d theta so far so good well great after this, it becomes a little bit more interesting, I would say. So, in a previous video, I, uh, I derived a formula for finding the cosine of 2 theta. And you can find it from the cards right now, and it is also in the descriptions part. And why do I bring it up? Well, you will see. So, in that video, I proved that cosine of 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. Okay, and you might say, aha, this is why he brought this up. Because I have sine squared theta here, and I have it here as well. So I will substitute for it, uh, because if I don't substitute, well, I mean, how, I'm, how am I going to solve this integral? It gets messy. So let's substitute for it. And if I solve this uh, green equation for sine squared of theta, I am going to have, let's see, sine squared of, squared of theta is equal to, 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, and don't forget to divide by 2. So I can substitute this here. And let's do that on the new page. 
So we will have the area is equal to negative 2. We have our boundaries. What was it? It was from pi to 0, pi, 0. And then we have r squared, which we can take out, take out of the integral sign because it is a constant. So let's take it out. r squared. And then we have sine squared of theta d theta. Well, we just found the sine. Uh, we just found the formula for sine squared. So let's just substitute that. And I am doing that right now. We found that it is equal to one minus cosine of two theta divided by. Uh, let's put the parentheses. Divided by two, and we have d theta. Okay. I just substituted for sine squared of theta. Now we are ready to take this integral. We are very close to the end, so stay tuned. If I distribute this negative sign, well then, if I make this a plus, so this is a plus, then this becomes a minus, and this becomes a plus as well. And look at this, tools cancel. I always love it when something cancels. This is great. Here we will have r squared. And let's have a parenthesis. We have the integral from pi to 0. Now we have the sum of two functions. We have negative 1 and cosine of 2 theta. We can break that integral into two pieces as follows. We will have negative 1 d theta. So basically, basically negative d theta. Okay. Plus the integral with the same boundaries of cosine of 2 theta d theta. All right, and let's close the parentheses. This is equal to r squared. Well, the first part is fairly simple. The integral of negative d theta is going to give us negative theta. We have negative theta, and we will evaluate it at our boundaries of 0 and pi. Then we will put a plus. We have the plus. Now we need to take the integral of cosine of 2 theta. Well, how can we approach this? We want to ask us, us, ourselves the question, which function, when differentiated, gives the uh, derivative of cosine of 2 theta? Well, we can say, I mean, it is perhaps something with sine, right? It is perhaps sine of 2 theta. And let's think, if I take the derivative of sine of 2 theta with respect to theta, what do I get? I get cosine of 2 theta, and using the chain rule, I multiply it by 2. This means to get the, this integrand, I should divide sine of 2 theta by 2. And in fact, if you take the derivative of this, you can check that you get this thing, which is cosine of 2 theta. So this is great. We are doing everything correctly, basically. And we evaluate this at 0 and we have pi. So, we are very close, by the way. So, stay tuned. We have r squared. What is, uh, what is, the, first inter what is the first evaluation going to give us? We will have negative 0 minus negative pi. Let me put the parentheses. Plus, we evaluate the sine of 2 theta divided by 2 at 0. So, we have sine of 0 divided by 2 minus, this is, again, inside the parentheses, this time we have pi, so we substitute that. We have sine of 2 pi divided by 2. This is, again, inside the parentheses. And look at this. What is sine of 0? It is 0. This goes to 0. What is sine of 2 pi? It is 0. This goes to 0. What is negative 0? It is 0. It goes to 0. What is negative times a negative? It is a plus. So we have a plus and a plus. What do we have? We have r squared times pi. If we rearrange it, we have pi r squared. And this is the formula that we have known for a long time, from elementary school perhaps, that it is the formula for finding the area of a circle. And today we were able to show that this formula is in fact true. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. And I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.